politically now we have to talk because Senator Joe Manchin, remember him from West Virginia? He has a lot of people wondering if power in D.C. will shift further right because yesterday he announced he's going to end his tenure as the Senate's worst Democrat. <laughs> he's, he's, in, he's right there with that other Christian cinema, another yes. one. Those are not great Democrats, but West Virginia will never do another red Democrat, I don't red, think. But let's it? watch yeah. him tell us yeah. what he's going to do. I've made one of the toughest decisions of my life and decided that I will not be running for re-election to the United States Senate. But what I will be doing is traveling the country and speaking out to see if there is an interest in creating a movement to mobilize the middle and bring Americans together. We need to take back America and not let this divisive hatred further pull us apart. So we're going to lose this Senate because of this? Very likely. Um, so, yeah, congrats to Democrats applauding this on losing control of the Senate, likely. Um, listen, Joe M Manchin's a consummate moderate because you have to be in red West Virginia. Jim Justice will very likely win this seat. But I was interested in what he said in that What's video. What's his name? Jim, Jim Justice, oh. former governor of West oh. Virginia who's running for the Senate. And my friend Mark Capito will likely be the next governor of West Virginia. But that aside, it, it seemed like he was hinting, Joe Manchin was hinting at potentially a third party bid. Yeah. People have wondered if he'd jump into the no labels kind of discussion. I've been largely critical of no labels because my fear is that A, it would end up boosting Trump and getting more support supporters to him. But I also think for a third party, which we need in this country to come about, it's going to take years, not one cycle. Right. However, I am warming to the idea, and let me say this, when six in 10 Americans say they don't want Donald Trump and they don't want Joe Biden, that offers people like me an alternative. And when I see the people who are associated with it, Governor Larry Hogan, a moderate Republican governor in a blue state, uh, people like John Huntsman, who was an excellent governor and former presidential candidate, that makes me interested. I want, I'm willing to hear what they have to say, but I worry that it could end up boosting the more dangerous candidate See, I think it's race. I think it's actually more than just an idea in Manchin's head, because uh, Manchin and Romney, um, just an hour after Manchin's announcement, a group filed paperwork, right, with the FEC to form a draft committee designed to encourage Manchin and Utah Senator Mitt Romney to launch a third-party presidential bid. So I think that's one of the reasons why he made this announcement. And I don't know, historically, if a third-party candidate has ever been successful other than in drawing votes away yes. from one of the majority uh, Ralph Nader. candidates. Ruins Ralph Nader. The, the whole thing. Basically Jill Stein. Al Gore. Jill yeah. Stein. Jill you know? Stein. So yeah. I, I, I think it's a bad idea. I think it's a much better idea to have a healthier Republican Party that is not led by Donald Trump. I think it's time for Republicans that are moderate and that are sophisticated to step up and denounce Trump. And I think that would solve the problem much more so than this sort of but third, why, this no I, label why party. Why not primary uh, Biden? But, but that, why run against him? But there's Why not a, just okay, primary? so there's, there's people already running in a primary uh, against Joe Biden. There's Dean Phillips from Minnesota. Yeah. There's a, uh, what's Marianne her name, the woman Jones with Ryan the courts. Williams. Yeah, Marianne Williams. Kennedy. There's, uh, now, the truth is that it's very late in the game. Uh, yeah. uh, in some of these states, some of these very important <laughs> states, places like Nevada, the filing deadline to be in the primary dead, uh, ballot has already passed. On Joe Manchin, you know, he's been a problem child for Democrats. <laughs> Uh, for the last few years, he and Kristen Cinema, but he's been part of the family and he's kept them in the majority. Mm -hmm. So he's played a very important role. I agree with you. I think that Governor Jim Justice, former governor, will win. This is the guy, you know, he's like the epitome of West Virginia. He's this southerner, very uh, successful businessman with baby dog. He's got this dog, baby dog, uh, he takes everywhere. Oh, whoa. And, um, <laughs> Baby dog for president. Yes, like, <laughs> right. I, I would vote for baby dog for, uh, for, for... But is this guy, Justice, is he a very right-wing guy he's kind a, of guy? He's very conservative, yeah. uh, and I think he appeal, and he's had very high approval numbers in West Virginia. Now, Joe Manchin and this listening tour... Look, I liked when No Labels first came on the scene. I think they were, they did this problem solvers caucus in Congress. They were trying to find bipartisan solutions. This thing to me is a desperate cry for relevance and attention by a bunch of elitist <coughs> former something who are thirsty to be part of the conversation. Joe Manchin, and what I want to, what I would ask John Huntsman, uh, what I would ask Joe Manchin is, 
Are you willing to be responsible for putting Donald Trump back in the White House, the man who's been a threat to democracy, a threat to American values, who led an insurrection? Are you willing to be part of something that may end up putting that man, who should be nowhere near the Oval Office, he should be in a jail cell, jail cell. are you res going what to be responsible? Let me, let me jump in yeah, here, guys, because I fully disagree that I, I don't think it's right for this election because of the risk of running against a Donald Trump. Right. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love the idea of a no labels party. I love it for everything it stands for. 47% of this com country identifies as independent. That's more than double on each side. I'm one of those independents. People are more moderate in this country and the two parties aren't getting the job done. One of the worst things we're seeing in DC and we talk about it here every day is the partisan and power over people. It is the fall in line or leave. Mm -hmm. That is not healthy. It does not capture what we want in this country. And by the way, every, things change at a glacial pace here. So start yeah. your listening tour. Go talk to the people. I think to team up with a Republican and Democrat ticket would be amazing. Every great idea in this country started as a crazy one. But it's and not, I think they it, should start. But it's every never major, worked. It's every never major worked. Think about the Green Party. So yeah. far, but, but this country has never been more extreme right now on the party. And the that, parties have gotten so far apart, they can no longer capture the middle. And let me just say, like, because I didn't get to be here yesterday coming out of the GOP debate, I was, wasn't feeling well. I'm still rooting for a sane candidate to emerge from the GOP primary. But I am open eyed that we are two, eyes, two months out from Iowa, and it doesn't look like we're going to get someone other than Donald Trump. Trump. I would love to see Nikki Haley, someone with foreign <coughs> policy chops, but if we come down to the rematch from hell that most Americans do not feel represented yeah. by, I don't know that I see this as just some grift of elitists who feel irrelevant or whatever. I think it's hearing from Americans who are saying, neither of these options work for me. But I have uh, spoken to some folks involved with no labels who have said that if they see polling w well into this that shows it's just going to be a boon for, tr for Trump, they would end up pulling their names okay, off the Okay, let me try.